Check, check, check. One, two. Test. Check. One, two. It's all good. Pardon me? Oh, those ones? Oh, I see.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome on this not so frigid day. So, finally, um, I just have a few announcements before we get started. Um, next Sunday, February 12th, is Scout Sunday, and um, any scouts are invited to attend the service, obviously. Um, and there's this note says that we have like five scout troops. I feel like we have more than that, but I could be wrong. Um, so, but just next Sunday will be Scout Sunday. Um, also, um, last night, I don't know if anyone's ever gone, but we went to the, uh, the railroad club, the Boy Scout Railroad Group. They had all the trains set up. So fun. I don't know if you've ever gone. It was kind of by accident that we went, but we had a blast, and the dinner was quite good, and I didn't have to cook it, so that was even better. Um, so I highly encourage you to, to do that next year if you haven't done it before. Um, next Sunday is our council meeting. But also, the following Sunday, I'm just consider this week one of your um, notification, we have changed our congregational meeting, the, month, the annual meeting, from the last month to next, to the 20, to the 19th, whatever, the, the President's Day weekend Sunday. Sorry about that. Um, Pastor will be gone on, is it the 18th? 19th. 19th? So it's not the 26th, it's the week before that. So this is week one of your notice, and then um, we'll, I'll let you know, I'll remind you again next week. So please plan on attending. Lots of interesting stuff to talk about at that meeting. Um, and uh, I think that's all I have. So welcome and enjoy the service. If you all saw in the Friday email um, that uh, Ryan has created a mural, um, we wanted to have it done for our first luncheon, but he, He's got a show this weekend, and actually, he, um, it, he didn't finish it again. So, <laughs> so it will be here next week. We'll premiere it next week, so I hope you come and see. Um, it's, a, it's a themed mural, so we can add to it as we grow and as we, we, we change here at, at Temple moving forward. Thank you. Good morning. It is great to see you here this morning. We gather to worship. We gather to be together. Now, of course, any one of us can worship all by ourselves somewhere, right? We take a walk. And... But there's something about being together that makes worship and mindfulness and awareness about God. There's something about being together that, that adds a layer to it that I don't think you can get all by yourself. And I don't think you can get just staying at home and watching it on TV. As important and as good as that is, for, for folks, it, it has served many, many people. But we are together. And in togetherness, we recreate, we re, reconstitute the body of Christ together. By being together. By being, sharing the gifts, sharing what we can bring. So, welcome to worship. I'm glad you're here. I hope that it is a time for, for you to feel nourished, fed in spirit, fed in heart. We're going to gather at the table and allow ourselves to remember what that means and why we do it and, and how it literally feeds us in spirit. So, breathe, be present. Let's be open to the Spirit of God. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let's pray. Oh God, you've come to us as the Prince of Peace. You've said, blessed are the peacemakers. You promised a peace that passes understanding. Let it catch fire within us, and let it shine forth from us. Amen.
Please join me in the litany and the call to worship. We gather as individuals and become a family. We gather as seekers and find that we are found. On the, I'm sorry. It, it, yeah, we kind of got that mixed up. Let's do it this way. I'll do the bold. You do the, um, okay? We gather as seekers and find that we are found. We gather to speak of ineffable things, things that cannot be seen with the natural eyes, love, forgiveness, reconciliation, and peace. We gather to speak of tangible things, things we would often prefer not to see with our natural eyes, of creation in distress, war, pain, and tears. In the beauty and the horror in ecstasy and in agony, we gather to allow the sacred presence that broods over all to redeem us and to call us to vital participation in the loving of this world. Let's all say this. Let us worship God. Amen. Let's join in the prayer of invocation. O God of being, we open ourselves to you. We open our hearts that they might be emptied of doubt and fear and filled with courage and faith. We open our minds to you, that they may be emptied of boredom and distraction and filled with purpose and vision. Forgive us when we close ourselves off from your spirit, refusing to breathe in and become filled with you. Be present in our togetherness as we gather in your name. Amen. And now I invite you to rise as we sing our opening hymn, 649, Gather Us In.
And um, do I have some younger folks with me this morning? That, okay. Sit over here, Steve. There we go. It's good to see you. Good to see you. My name is Phil, and in the church here, they call me Pastor Phil because I'm the minister here. I'm, I'm the new guy. Hey, you. Hi. What's that belly? Do you know when I see a belly like that, I just want to tickle it. <laughs> what do you get there? What's your toy? What? What's that? Okay. Um, tell me your name. Wilbur. Wilbur. And what's your name? What's your name? He's still working on it. Okay. Okay. Well, it's good to see you. Um, it's good to meet you. And um, he, we're just... We come to a place like this, we come here, and we're trying to figure out what it is to be alive, what it is to be in Downers Grove, what it is to be church, what it is to be human, what it is to be, hey, excuse me, how old are you? How old are you? How's your brother? He's that much? You know, I can't even remember when I was that much. I can't remember. Um, how old are you? How much is that? Eight. Seven, you're right, seven. Now, here's the thing. I want to show you a couple things in the church this morning. I want to show you a couple things here that help us to understand what it means to be human and what it means to be part of a church, okay? I want to show you. Um, come with me. This is what we call the communion table, okay? This is what we call the communion table. Our two-year-old has lots of energy. <laughs> there we go. And so we have, come here, come in here. We have here bread, and in this cup there's juice, okay? There's juice. And later in the service, we are going to share bread and the cup with the whole group. And we understand, we understand that there's something about bread and wine, drink, that teaches us about God. Teaches us something about God. Because sometimes God, the whole idea of God is just hard to understand. And so sometimes we have to drill it down really simple. Um, and so God becomes food, and we share food at the table. So what's your favorite food? What do you like to eat? What do you like to eat? You like to eat mozzarella sticks. Okay, that's food. You take it in, and then it feeds us, nourishes us, and gives us energy. And we say that God is something like that, right? Now, come up, come up a little further here. See these? See these? These are candles, and we light them every time. Every time we start worship, we light them. And it's our way of saying that God is present. God's spirit is present. And candles give us a kind of sense, an idea of that. And then we have this, we, we share this idea that somehow you can be like a candle, you can give your light. And this guy, he's got a bright light too. That's kind of harder to contain, but it's fun. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing a little song that helps us understand the lesson of the candles. Because the whole idea is we understand God as light. But then we can understand that we are light as well. 
And so there's a little song that I know you know it that helps us to share that, celebrate that, and tell that. And so let's us just go back here in front of the table, and Deb is going to play, and we're going to sing this little light of mine. If we can catch this guy, let's let's join, let's stand at the front and sing together. Is everybody let's sing it? Here we go. This little light of mine. Just so we get it. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you for spending a minute with me. Thank you, Deb. Let's continue in the music. We're going to invite the choir to sing, I will exalt you, O my Lord. Thank you. 
Thank you, choir and Deb. Our scripture reading this morning is from Matthew's Gospel, continuing on where we left off last week. Last week was the Beatitudes, blessed are, blessed are, blessed are. This is a continuation of that so-called Sermon on the Mount in Matthew. And here it says, picking up at uh, 13, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches other, others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay. One of my earliest memories was the sound of being woken up in the morning. It was the clunk, clunk, clunk of a wooden spoon <coughs> against a, a big pot. Because in our family, breakfast time was roll out pork. Uh, and dad, you know, would be up the minute and so bang, bang, bang on the, on the pot, you know, porridge is sticky. And so that was just the sound that woke us up every morning. Now. Dad was pretty good at making porridge, but every once in a while, he forgot to put the salt in. And have you ever taken a big mouthful of no salt porridge? It's, it's, you know, it's, we are the salt of the earth. Now much has been said and written about what that can mean, and it's both it's both simple and obvious and yet hard to completely lean into it and, and to grasp. For us, salt is a flavor enhancer. But in the last, what, just a couple decades, I mean, think along the, think along the world and humans and, you know, just in the last couple decades, we've been warned that too much salt can give you heart problems and so on. So we've been kind of warned off salt. Um, we tend to have a mixed relationship with salt. But not that long ago, salt had an almost magical quality about it. It was highly, highly valued. In fact, it was often used as a form of currency you would get paid in salt. Um, it's, where, it's where that expression came from, you know, a person's not worth their salt. Um, they weren't worth their, their hourly, you know, they weren't worth what they were being paid. That's what that literally means. Um, for them, salt was also a preservative. Um, in the days before refrigeration, uh, salting was one of the main ways that food could be stored and preserved. So it was incredibly important. Um, salt. Think about it. It gives itself to the recipe. It ceases to exist as a separate individual thing. It just becomes part of the whole, and it changes the whole, the whole recipe. Salt of the earth. Maybe, maybe the whole world isn't supposed to be salt, but 
those of us who claim it as an identity, it doesn't take a lot of salt to change the whole meal. Think about that. Just a pinch of salt changes everything. Maybe, maybe it's just a little act of kindness that can change someone's whole day, or can, can change the world, literally. A while ago, Vicki and I, we both get home about the same time. And uh, this is my wife, Vicki, by the way, in case you haven't met her. Um, and we both get home at the same time. You know, we're both tired and, you know, after a day's work. And neither one of us had done anything to plan for dinner, you know, those, those days. And uh, we're both hungry and tired and don't feel like going out to the market, don't feel like starting, you know, that whole deal. And so, of course, what do, we're just going to bring in, you know, the takeout, bring in, right? Has anyone else ever done that? Yeah, right, right? You just bring in, okay. So, we decide it'll be a local burger place for dinner. So I'm standing at uh, a little burger joint called Meatheads that was just up the street in Glen Ellen. And I'm giving my order to this fresh-faced young guy. Um, couldn't have been more than about 16 years old. You know, a kid. Uh, so I make my order, give him my card. He slides it and then looks at his screen and then just kind of apologetically looks back at me and says politely, you know, you know sir, your card has been declined. <coughs> you know, there's some days you just don't want to hear that. You know what I mean? Um, that was one of those days I take a deep breath and, you know, I'm sure I did something. I'm sure I did that. You know what I mean? Could you please just try it again? You know, I know the card is good. I've used it several times earlier that day. He does. And again, decline. And he's very polite, very, you know. Um, I'm starting to get a little bit frustrated at this point. You know, please, will you please just try it again. Because I... He does, and he says, sir, I'm very sorry, um, it's declined, it's declined. And so by that time, I'm pretty sure the frustration is showing on my face. I mean, I, you know, I mean, you see me all nice and smiley here this morning, right? Um, I'm sure he's, he noted the frustration, and, but I say, okay, I'll just go home and get another card, I'm just up the street. And I thank him and start to leave. But in that time, while I'm saying that, he has taken out another card and has run it through the machine. And so I'm thinking, okay, this is a, this is a card that they have that resets the reader, or, and you know, and now everything's going to be fine. And now it'll take my card. And but then he hands me the receipt and says. There, I've taken care of it. And now I'm confused. <laughs> taking care of what? And he says, well, I paid for your meal. And I said, no, 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 you don't have to do that, please. No, you don't have to do that. Uh, I can go home and get another card. And he said, no, 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 it's done. It's done. He said, you know, someone, someone did something really nice for me the other day, and they said, just pass it on. And so I'm just passing it on. And that was that. I was blown away. Suddenly, a day that had been kind of cloudy and dull and tasteless, if we want to continue that image had been turned. I was amazed. I, I told, I went home, told Vicki what happened. <laughs> and she says, that's great, but you can't take money from a kid. You know, she said, 
you know, no way, here. And she, you know, she opens her purse, pulls out a 20s. You're gonna go back there right now and you're gonna give him this money. You're not taking money from a kid. Okay, okay, I listen to my wife. And so I take the 20 back and I go to, to give this kid back his money. But he wasn't there, his shift was over. A little touch of kindness. I think that's what the scripture is talking about. And I think he taught me. He taught me. Because then I've taken that little bit of kindness, that thing, and have also passed it on. It turns out that the card had been compromised. And you know, what if the world, what if the world could learn something from that kid just about looking for opportunities to put a little pinch of salt, a little flavoring into moments that just appear, that just appear all the time in our lives. I think the world can use a little flavoring right now. Little acts of mercy, little acts of kindness. You're the light of the world. It's obvious. You don't light a light and then cover it up. Light exists to shine. Think of that. You exist to shine. Whatever gifts you have, whatever you have, your only job in life is to be generous with it and to shine. If you're a singer, sing. If you're a dancer, dance. If you're a if you're an accountant, count. You know, all the things, all of the gifts, all the things that we have to simply be generous, to be generous, to, to let the world, let, let God's kingdom have the advantage of you. That's what it is. We can shine. This church can shine. I'm excited about the service next week. Um, the Boy Scouts thing. You know, Boy Scouts have a long and wonderful tradition. A lot of young lives, I think, are helped, helped into their shining through that movement, through that thing. And we're going to celebrate that, celebrate those young guys and the people who lead them and that story. And this church shines by helping them to shine. And so... Come next week and encourage those young guys. Encourage the leaders. Um, if any of you have been part of the scouting movement um, and you still have some of your memorabilia, bring it and show it and, and encourage them. Let's have it a time when we celebrate that little moment of shining. The leaders, the kids, this church's history and heritage in just launching that. It's one of the ways that we shine in this community. And so let's, next week, let's just lean into it and, and just celebrate it. Celebrate it. I want to close by um, lifting up someone who let their light shine and it changed the world. Um, this is Black History Month, as, as I'm sure you are aware. Um, and one of the one of the shining lights uh, was Nelson Mandela, who uh, was in prison. Who you know, his own story is his own story. Um, just a couple quotes. I want to end with a couple of his quotes, and it fits very much in line with what we've been talking about. He said, "There can be no greater gift than that of giving." one's time and energy to help others without expecting anything in return.
beautiful. What counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It is what difference we have made to the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life we lead. Let's see shine. It made a difference, encouraging us to also shine. So many ways to get this truth. It's core. It's, it's core Christianity. Let's move to the table. It's the same lesson. Look. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, in other words, life was hard. There was stuff going on. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. Bread. And he broke it. And he says, this is my body. This. of me. In other words, you get to be bread too that gets broken and shared to nourish someone else. several ways of enjoying communion this morning. We have it in the little the wafer in the little thing. So we're going to pass that out if you would prefer to have it that way. Otherwise we're going to pass out bread and then the wine. So it's up to you which one you want. Okay? Let's share the bread now.
must say it together, knowing that we feed on the life of Christ and let we get to be nourishment for others. Supper, he took the cup. And he says, This represents the new covenant, uh, the new testament, the new paradigm, the new way of understanding how things are. This is my blood poured out for you. This That world had kind of two places for blood. There was blood on the battlefield and understanding that the winners were the glorious and that they were the vindicated by God, the blood on the battlefield. And then there was the blood of sacrifice in the temple. Jesus in this moment doesn't lean into either one of those images of like this wine drink is my blood my life essence my life poured out for you wine the drink that we have at weddings at dinner this ourselves out 
Now we continue worship with the receiving of our morning tithes and offerings. Let's pray. These gifts and the faithfulness that they represent is what makes our ministry possible. We ask God to bless our faithfulness and to extend the reach of love throughout the world. Amen. You may be seated. Let's continue in prayer. O God of the time of our lives, God who has given us breath, be in us and with us as we open ourselves to you. Fill us with your spirit as you heal our ears so that we may truly hear and heal our eyes so that we may see what is most important to behold. We ask for your blessing on Harold and Helen and Steve McVicker this morning. Bless them and may they feel your presence as they feel the love of those who are around them as caregivers. May they feel connected to the family that, where you are the host. We pray for those in our hearts right now, in a silent moment, other people in our lives that we know that they're struggling, that they have a need or they're lost or they need 
to be connected or they need healing. We hold their names and their lives in our hearts right now. We pray for this church, that it continues to be a place of blessing, a place of ministry, a place of service, a place of being salt of the earth, a place of being a light, that city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Fill us so that we overflow with joy. And now we pray the prayer that you taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let's join in singing our final hymn, hymn number 14. Now thank we all our God. We have gathered, we've been together, we have worshipped, we've heard, we've been fed, and now we're invited to go into the world, scattered as wheat, as salt, and you're invited to shine with who you are, with what you are, with what you have to be generous with, and so go and shine, and the world will be changed. Amen. Amen. God be with you.